Hello and good day guys. Uh, here's a new tutorial about the ultimate focus method that we call three button focus. This is a tutorial made mainly for the Sony cameras, but I'm sure that some other brands or camera models can also make similar adjustments and uh, give you a uh, like similar experience. Mm, so let's talk about three button focus first. It has been a hidden or underground professional technique for many many years, like at least five years now, I'm sure. But it's just been weird that it never got the attention that it deserved, as it's, it's just so easy to use and it can suit so many different uh, situations. For me, it's, it looks like that this technique this particular technique, it is criminally ignored for many users. So let's get into today's topic and check out why it is awesome. Okay, so first let's talk about the focus mode dilemma. It means that no matter what your setting was, it seems like you will always have to change it on the fly all the time, which takes a lot of time and hassle. Let me show you what I'm talking about. The focus mode dilemma is about the unpredictable nature of photography. Because you would have a lot of subjects if you are like going for a travel or just a casual photo work. And uh, even if you are like shooting in the fashion, and sometimes you would like uh, focus at the model or sometimes you would have to go for some details of your model and sometimes you want it to be environmental sometimes you don't so everything can change like in a fraction of a few seconds and uh, then you would find that oh i should change the focus mode or focus area and that is just a really bad experience so for like uh, a few scenarios like for the landscape you would want to use like AF single or maybe uh, zoomed manual focus or AF single with manual focus or like DMF but um, then you would like go for the street and then you will find that AFC is much better usually especially with the wide tracking area but Sometimes it doesn't work uh, if you are trying to like focus on some uh, particular subject of your frame. So wide tracking, it doesn't always work. For the portrait, uh, it usually you can just use the wide tracking. But sometimes you would also want to like start the tracking from center area and then re reframe your photo and for the dogs or like something like a UFO I mean actually this UFO is just for like anything suddenly uh, unrecognized by a camera and you still want to track it then it's just better to start tracking from the center spot of your camera right but all these modes and areas they are different from each other and you are going to change it from like this to the other one and it's gonna be a real pain for you so this is where the three button focus come in handy because you would have a shutter button for the EFC wide tracking and the AF on button for the EFC center spot tracking then the AEL button for the AFS or DMF. So why should we have these? Because the AFC wide is the most versatile and uh, usually the fastest way to start the tracking on general subjects. But then sometimes you would want to uh, start uh, tracking from a more precise area that is where the AFC center spot tracking uh, can help you a lot. But and also 
sometimes、uh, AFC itself is not working perfectly, and you want to maybe use the manual focus or AFS. That's where you can use the auto exposure lock button to get your focus mode set on time. The fun fact is that this is nothing new, as I said it before.、Uh, pros have been using it for many years because Sony has been allowing you to do customized hold buttons for many years, and、uh, it's so good and so useful that it can re- actually reduce a lot of frustration. But we still don't see a widespread of it,、uh, even DP review. They made a video about it and only had like 40 kilo views about it, and only 32 comments down below. That's just weird. Then、uh, we have like、uh, this guide itself. It's only just one minute. I I can assure you, you can do it within a minute, and、uh, to set up everything, then you can just use five minutes to get used to it, and then. It will become a instinct, actually an instinct for you to choose between the shutter, the EF, and the auto exposure lock. I can assure you that. So how to set it up?、Uh, first, you would have to get to the toolbox here, this one, and then get to the operation customizing. And custom key settings. In the new menu, you、uh, set it to first the camera area, and then the shooting mode.、Uh, it should be record custom hold one or record custom hold two, depending on which button that you are setting now. So how to set it up? Actually,、uh, first you would have to remove all other ticks. Remove all other ticks except for the fox mode, fox area, tracking sensitivity, and AF on. Remove all the ticks、uh, except for these four options, and then for the AF on button, you should go like this, and for the AEL button, go like this. Uh, so after each each thing is done, then you can just go for the register button, and it will remember what you have set. So the next time, if you press the AEL button, it will just set your camera automatically in AFC tracked. And then if you press it, and then if you press the AEL button, you will get like DMF mode. All right, that's all. I think、um, you can enjoy your new camera now because I'm pretty sure if you set it up correctly, you can get an amazing autofocus.、Um, though there are some like different details, like the settings pages or the arrangement of the Sony menu, but actually this function. Its feature, it is doable on a lot of Sony cameras, all the Gen 3 cameras and、uh, later Gen 4 cameras, including the A7S3 and the A1. Then even some APS-C cameras like A6400 and、uh, 65, 6600. All those models they have this custom hold button. So they can be used like this.、Ah, okay, just please be sure to spread the word with your friends or colleagues who is also a photographer, because、uh, we all progress by sharing our own knowledge, like what I'm doing now. Because if they still don't know about it, it is really a shame. I mean, it's such a waste for today's like super powerful cameras, right? Things can be so much faster for like different situations, and I will have a tiny example for you, and you can see it right now. So this is the mode that we set on the shutter, the EFC with wide 
tracking. It is very fast. That's the first thing we consider. And when you half press the shutter, I hope that you can get get a focus within like 0.1 second. And that is actually doable with like GM lenses now. Uh, and this method itself, it works very well even under like bad lighting because it uses the most uh, AF points on your camera, so it's very useful. But it is not good at picking the single subject that you want to focus at. So if you are not focusing something like this, which is just a main subject in the same focal plane, uh, the same focal plane, then you would have to change to another mode or another focus area. I believe that you've been in the same situation quite a few times that you just want to focus on a single stranger which, uh, who is just your subject for now in this photo but you can't because your camera don't know who to focus because there are so many people in the frame that's where you can use the spot tracking, right? and yeah, that's exactly what it can do and it works great actually in some busy streets or uh, like if you are trying to focus a bird inside the tree or like a plane that is behind or around the cloud it just works better Now we have the uh, AFS or DMF mode for the landscape mode. Uh, I simply prefer this mode than the completely manual focus because it is usually just faster and I can use the center spot to always aim on the target that I want to shoot. So I map it on the AE lock. There are many other photography types that you can use it on. Like for the plane photography, you can try to use the shutter or the AF on, depending on how big the plane looks in your viewfinder. And if you are doing like tree bird photography, sometimes uh, you can see some tree branches that is uh, in front of their lens, right? Between you and the bird. So if you are using the EFC wide, you can easily get distracted by the branch. But if you try to use the, um, if you try to use the single focus first to get your focal plane pretty close to the bird where the bird is, then you can start tracking much easier and much more accurate than just doing it blindly. Then you can try to use the EF1 button to lock it with your center area. Mm, it should be working better than using the EF wide. And if you are using, uh, if you are shooting like some environment portraits, like if your subject is on a busy street and there are lots of other strangers moving on now, then the EF1 button can also help you a lot to filter out um, who you don't really want to focus on. Alright, so here is my miniature land where I can showcase you how to use these different focus buttons. So first, let's not focus on this legal figure. What am I going to focus on? The Master Chief, right? Uh, so because Master Chief is in the majority of this viewfinder, so it, it is very easy to focus at him with the shutter button. But because he's an action figure and he's not a recognized subject, so sometimes the camera cannot find his eyes, I mean helmets, right? Master Chief has only helmets. So what can you do? You can use the center focusing to track his helmet, right? Like this. Then, if you want to focus at the background of the miniature land, 
you you will find yourself very hard by using the two EFC modes because it will just focus on the closest thing or the most obvious subject. That's where you can use the AEL button to trigger the camera into the DMF mode. That you can always use a focus screen to fix the problems. Like this.